This is a presentation about how to choose your dental photography camera system. First, let's watch a short slideshow highlighting some of my work. let me tell you a little bit about who I am and what got me into this line of work. I was accepted into college as a music major at uh, Catholic University in Washington DC and um, changed my major from music to political science and then I transferred to George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia where I uh, ended up with a degree in economics, a Bachelor of Science. Went to work for IBM straight out of college, actually interned with them while I was in college, and was in sales and management for 21 years there. The last, I guess, eight years of my time at IBM, I really got interested in photography. I picked up a camera and it kind of created um, or filled a creative void that I had in my life since getting out of music. Um, I started out in 1997 doing portraits and weddings on the weekends and went full-time in uh, 2005 uh, when I left IBM. I went from portraits and weddings to more commercial type work, headshots and uh, work for different companies. I did some work uh, in the political arena uh, during the 2012 presidential campaign and uh, since then have uh, opened up a new opportunity for myself in the dental photography area. And one of the things that I've found that a lot of dentists and dental professionals need help with is actually selecting a dental photography camera system. So a DSLR, digital single lens reflex camera, uh, lens and uh, flash system that, that make up their photography system. There's so many choices out there, it's very difficult and confusing to decide what's going to work best for you and that's what this presentation is geared towards helping you with. I'm going to start talking uh, about a workflow that I teach for dental photography because the selections of equipment are dependent on that workflow. In other words, I want to make sure that the, the equipment that I suggest to you and recommend to you will work well for you and make you very productive and won't be a burden to the process. The different components I'm going to talk about is first the camera system and that's the camera body and there's some things that I think you should look for there and when I talk about that I'm going to talk about some software that I use that I would recommend that you take a look at using that will help you make you very very productive using your camera. The next component is the lens. Um, this is all about macro photography when you take intraoral photographs and macro photography requires a specialized lens and we're going to talk about that and the specialized flash that you need to use that goes along with that. A lot of dentists want to take before and after shots so that they can use them to sell procedures or uh, consult with their clients on procedures they think the client may want to have or may need to have, the patient may need to have. So I'm going to talk about dental portrait photography a little bit because that's different than intraoral photography and the requirements for equipment are slightly different and uh, I 
thought it would be helpful to help you understand that. Then I'm going to take you through some of the recommended photography bundles that um, I recommend uh, people look at as a first step in the process. So it's going to encompass a camera, the lens, the flash, and some other components. Well, what do I mean by workflow? Well, workflow is a, a set of procedures uh, that you go from step one to step 10, so to speak, and you do each one in order as defined. So it's a definable, repeatable process. And I start out with image capture, and it ends up with whatever your final output may need to be. So that might be a JPEG that you want to send to your lab uh, to help with a, um, a case that you're working on uh, for shade matching, uh, you know, before and after prints for your walls and your waiting room, you know, whatever it needs to be. It starts with image capture and goes to final output. And it, uh, my workflow recommends utilizing professional industry tested tools and techniques and in a color managed environment. There are a couple of things in here that are very, very key and important. Definable, repeatable is very important because you want to be able to do this all the time. So you know what you're doing and especially if you have multiple people in your office that are making dental images, everybody needs to be doing things the same way and everybody needs to know what that process is. So it needs to be defined and it needs to be repeated every single time. The other thing that's important is industry tested tools and techniques. That's all I recommend you use. So from your camera equipment to software to whatever is involved in the process, I want it to be an industry tested, you know, ironclad solution that's going to work for you every single time. So we're not reinventing the wheel and we're not using, um, you know, one off products. And this last bit is very important and it's part of where I think a lot of dental um, training falls short and that's color management. So what does that mean? Let me take just a second and tell you what that means. Color management basically is, is very simple. It provides, helps you provide consistency and predictability throughout the image capture, viewing, and output process as far as your color appearance goes. So it means we capture the image correctly in capture with, excuse me, in camera with accurate color and the exposure is correct, everything is right there. So then when you go to view it on your, on your monitor, if you're going to make any kind of adjustments, we need to make sure that the monitor and your viewing environment are set up properly because every monitor is not made to display color accurately. So, you know, I part of the workflow needs to be viewing accurate color on a, a color accurate capable monitor. That's a mouthful, isn't it? And then once you go from viewing your image on your monitor to getting what you see on your monitor in a final print or in the JPEG that you send to your lab or whatever that final output is, um, I talk about how to do that. So that's the workflow that I teach. It begins in capture, goes to view, and continues through output. Now I have three classes that deal with these three areas. The first I call my shoot class and it starts off talking about image management. How do you manage on your computer and in your office all these wonderful digital assets that you're capturing. And it starts off after that talking about the capture process. How do you get everything right in camera as I mentioned. It talks about um, the camera settings, ISO, shutter speed aperture, those kinds of things, the metering settings, the focus settings, and the flash which happens to be probably the most um, difficult part for most people. I talk to you about how to make the, all those things work effectively, simply, and easily so that every time you're getting consistent results. Then I talk about image control and what I mean by that is how do you know that you're getting all those things right in camera and there's some ways um, to kind of look at that as you go uh, Call and one tool is called a histogram to do that. I teach you about them, how to read them, what they are, and, and how to use them effectively. White balance is another big part, and that happens to do with the color management piece of it. Um, you know, how do you get the color accurate in camera so you're not tweaking it after the fact? A lot of classes teach you, uh, we'll just do that later in Photoshop. We'll get the exposure right, we'll get the color fixed in Photoshop. Well, that's really not an effective way to do it, or an efficient way to do it, and it takes time, and that eats into the bottom line of, of your business. So we want to get it all right in camera every time so we don't have to fool with any of those things. So that's what my 
shoot class teaches. Then when you go to the next stage of the process, viewing color accurately on a monitor, I talk about what the working environment that you're looking at your images in needs to be. Talk about the monitors that are capable of displaying color accurately, how you actually set them up to do that, and uh, which is calibration and profiling, and shooting tethered. You can shoot directly from your camera into your computer um, with some caveats, um, but it makes things much, much more productive. And there's a, a tool that I use that I recommend uh, everybody get, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, that um, that allows for that. And I go into a, a short introduction of that. And then using digital camera profiles, which is a way to take your color to the next level. The last part of, of the workflow and the last class that I teach is called my print class. So monitor to print matching. How do you do that? Um, you can set it up, your environment up, so that if you make adjustments on your monitor, you can see those adjustments and they'll print out exactly as you see them on your color accurate printer. Uh, I teach you how to do that in the print module. Um, you may not need all three of these pieces, but you need to start if you need all three with the shoot class, move to the view class, and then move to the print class because they all build on each other. So those are the three classes I teach. And before you even get into that, um, you need to know how to do all this stuff and, and what kind of equipment you need. But here's a testimonial from a couple, one of the labs that I've worked with um, that I've done this whole process with them, the shoot, view, and print class. Um, I started out as a customer of theirs and uh, ended up teaching them my workflow and they've been very happy with the results. Another lab I've started working with um, has done my shoot class and we're getting ready to do the rest of it, but they've uh, had great uh, great results with what I've taught. And by the way, both of these labs are here in the Denver metropolitan area and they've both sponsored my classes on and at their sites for their customers. So I think they've gotten a lot of value out of it and their their customers have too. All right, well, what do I mean by a camera system? That's the first thing we're gonna talk about. 